Greetings, greetings everyone from Indianapolis, Indiana and Indiana University, Indianapolis. Um, it is wonderful to have you all on the call today. We're so happy uh, you have joined us uh, for the presentation, our second presentation uh, with the Inside IU Indianapolis Global. Today's topic is focusing on psychology with the School of Science. Before we begin, uh, I just wanted to give a few housekeeping reminders here. Uh, first and foremost, we're so glad you're on the call today, but we are recording this call, so it will be uh, able to be viewed on our social media pages later after we finish the live stream, including Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Um, we do have a chat here on our call today that we would love to hear from you. So please uh, drop questions in about the presentation today. Let us know where you're calling in from. We can see the chat. We'll monitor the chat during the presentation and we will uh, be sure to save questions from the audience uh, for our Q&A session at the end of the call today. So let us know what questions about psychology you have. And we will be following up uh, the call today to send out certificates for those who have joined um, the full webinar today. So uh, my name is Leslie Grishin and I am the Assistant Director of International Admissions at IU Indianapolis. And on behalf of IU Indianapolis and the Office of International Affairs, we're so very pleased uh, to have our speaker join us today from the School of Science. Um, I'll turn it over in just a moment to Professor Bohm, who is the Chair of Psychology at IU Indianapolis. And um, during the call today, he'll be presenting on the topic of psychology, what are the options and how do I get there. Uh, we will then have a brief uh, presentation about IU Indianapolis, and then we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end of the call today. So with that, uh, over to you, Professor Bohm. Thank you so much for joining us, and we're excited to hear your presentation. Thank you so much for the introduction, Leslie. I appreciate it very much. I want to wish everybody a good afternoon, uh, good morning uh, to Leslie here in Indianapolis. Uh, yes, we're going to talk about psychology today and programs in psychology in the Indiana University School of Science here in Indianapolis. Whoops, wrong button. There we go. So, so to begin, I thought that I might uh, orient everyone in terms of uh, a definition, a working definition of psychology. Exactly what is it? So if you study psychology in college, what are you getting yourself into? And so the American Psychological Association defines psychology as the scientific study of the mind and behavior. And you can see on the right here uh, in the blue box, there's another, I don't know if you can see my pointer here, but uh, there's another box here uh, in the lower right of the blue box that defines it as the study of behavior, mental processes, and experience. Either one of those uh, either one of those definitions can work, but that's basically what psychology is: um, the interface between um, the mind and behavior. Uh, I am a neuroscientist, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that a bit later. But I would I would say mind, brain, and behavior. I would add brain to that definition as well but that's my bias as a neuroscientist. So what sorts of um, fields might one expect to see in psychology? And, and psychology is um, a diverse discipline with a lot of different subfields. And so I've listed just some of them here. I could have gone on, but the slide cuts me off, right? So I wanna keep this to one slide, I gotta stop somewhere. But developmental psychology would be this, the study of um, development, uh, early on, all the way until um, it, you know, aging and death, like psychology across the lifespan. Sports psychology, health psychology, which um, actually our department focuses on. Um, so this is the interface between things like cardiovascular function and, and psychology. Clinical psychology, social psychology, cognitive psychology, industrial organizational psychology, uh, another area that the, the department here in Indianapolis focuses on. So this is going to be... Um, more the study of how uh, industries, companies, organizations function, how you can um, best design a working group in an organization for, for best output, this sort of thing. Um, educational psychology, forensic psychology, um, and then here's my area at the bottom here, biological psychology or behavioral neuroscience. Right, so how about jobs? Um, so, Psychology is diverse. There are a lot of subdisciplines. You might expect then that there are a lot of different sorts of jobs that one might hold 
if they uh, got a degree in psychology. There are numerous career options, um, as I was suggesting, and as the subfields would suggest. Um, psycho a psychology degree here in the US um, carries more weight generally than it does uh, around the rest of the world. So uh, studying psychology here can be advantageous, but I know there's some terrific psychology programs in India and elsewhere uh, around the world. So, um, so not, not to disparage all of those programs as well, just terrific programs that you could get yourself um, into. There are job opportunities, many of them here in the US. Uh, 3. million people um, with degrees in psychology are employed across the United States. And this is uh, from data um, provided by the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, decent salaries are associated with these jobs. Um, although, as you might expect with the, the great diversity across you know, different fields of psychology, the, the salary can vary widely and it can be a whole lot more than the 54,300 that I list here. But, uh, but decent salaries can, be, uh, can, can generally be made by, by folks in psychology. I should say here too, that um, there's, a, there's a difference as you might expect between the kind of wage you might earn with a bachelor degree in psychology versus a more advanced degree in psychology. And I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Um, job experience after graduation um, can be important, especially if you are an international student coming to study psychology or anything else here in the US. And there's a post-completion optional practical training option for the F1 visa extension. And so what this is gonna do is permit um, a period of time where, where if you came to the US to study psychology or anything else, you might stay here and work in the field for up to three years after graduation on that F1 visa. So what are some of the jobs? Uh, some of them might be uh, predictable, maybe others not. Um, I took this particular graphic um, from the internet, but you know, here are just some, some examples. Um, there are psychologists that work in the area of aviation. Uh, there are psychologists that work in the area of, of consumers, uh, like buying and selling goods. Uh, forensic psychologists are important in helping um, for working in the court system uh, in the US and worldwide, uh, working with, with both uh, folks that are um, clients uh, in the court system and also the courts themselves to try to, to, to help the courts function properly. There are psychologists in the military um, school psychologists are a big deal. We've we got to have psychologists that can um, help the learning process along, help individual students uh, and their instructors um, best achieve um, learning goals. So these are just some examples. I'm going to have another slide. I'm going to return to this jobs thing here in a minute, but I wanted to come back to the sorts of degrees that one might get and how they differ. So I mentioned the bachelor degree already, and then I talked about, you know, maybe higher paying jobs might be associated with these advanced degrees. All the different degree types are here, uh, except I'm realizing now I don't have the PsyD listed here. I'm gonna, I'll mention it here and then I'll, I'll mention it again a bit later, but we have Bachelor of Science degrees, both Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. That's the BA and the BS option. These are generally four year degrees. I think most of the students or prospective students on this call are, are uh, high school students, um, if I'm not mistaken. And so you probably would be thinking about a bachelor degree to start with. Um, in, in the US, most of our bachelor students are domestic or US citizens, but we are increasingly growing our international undergraduate population at, at IU, um, Indianapolis, and uh, across the country, really. Um, these programs, these bachelor programs are competitive. Um, it's harder to get into top universities but there are lots of opportunities, uh, universities across the U.S. that you could get into. And, um, and I would argue that um, you don't need to get into a top university to get a stellar undergraduate education. Uh, I'd, I'd even go farther and say that maybe you don't want to go to a top university um, to, to get a stellar education. Um, and so then the advanced degrees kind of follow these bachelor degrees. So once you get the four year degree, you might go on to get a master's degree that can be a master of arts or a master um, uh, uh, of science degree. I didn't list those here, but these are generally one and a half to two year degree programs uh, in at Indiana University in Indianapolis. They're mostly domestic students again, although here we have another growing and, 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 and maybe even larger population of international students on campus. Financial aid can be limited here, but there, there are some options. 
Um, the PhD or the PsyD is off to the right here. Um, these programs, um, you can enter one of these programs right out of your bachelor degree. Um, some of these programs have a built-in master's degree, some don't. But the, the PhD and the PsyD degrees are just uh, basically four to six years. The PsyD de degree is a little bit longer. It's more of a professional practice uh, version of the advanced degree. But uh, these are also competitive. Uh, again, they're mostly domestic students, but there are a growing population of international students in PhD in PsyD programs in the US. Um, and these often come with financial assistance from the institution. So graduate uh, PhD students in psychology at IU Indianapolis um, get financial assistance from the department or a number of other sources. But, the, but, but this really helps uh, a student get the degree without incurring a bunch, a bunch of debt. All right, and there's just more information uh, about the differences between these degree types here. Uh, you might have questions about the, the Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology versus the Bachelor of Science. The Bachelor of Arts degree is uh, kind of a more of a, a liberal arts version of the degree. Um, there are more general psychology courses. Um, and a student that, I mean, really it, in psychology here at IU Indianapolis, the differences between the Bachelor of Arts degree and the Bachelor of Science are very small. And I'll tell you what they are in a minute. But broadly speaking, um, someone who, who may not, who may be looking for a job, but not necessarily a job in a subfield of psychology might pursue a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology. Bachelor of Science, on the other hand, is a more scientifically based, more specialized. There are more specific uh, and specialized psychology courses that are built into the major. And someone who's interested in pursuing a career in psychology uh, might prefer to take a, a to, to go a Bachelor of Science route. Um, and careers here can range from counseling to clinical therapy to forensic psychology. Um, and even to experimental research in the area of psychology. I'm going to leave it here and we can definitely talk more about these distinctions um, a, a bit later on in the Q&A session if anyone has questions. So as promised, uh, a little bit more of a list here. So somebody who has a bachelor's degree in, in psychology um, and, and, and again, you know, there, there's subtle differences between the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. And I, and I just recalled that I told you I would tell you what the difference might be at IU Indianapolis, and I didn't. So if the, the, really the difference for us is that the Bachelor of Arts degree has more of a, a, a language, a foreign language component to it. The Bachelor of Science degree doesn't have that requirement, but it's replaced with you know a heavier, heavier em emphasis on research experience and this sort of thing. So at IU Indianapolis, that's the difference. But here are some jobs that you could get with, with probably a Bachelor of Arts degree or a Bachelor of Science degree, um, really. So social worker. Uh, I, teacher, uh, a K through 12 teacher. So kindergarten all the way up through uh, 12th grade in the US um, educational system. A social uh, services manager, a pro probation or parole officer, marketing specialist, um, marketing promotion and advertising manager, public relations specialist, sales manager. I could keep reading, but you can, you can read those yourself. So, uh, and, and again, this list could go on and on and on. Um, I would argue that a psychology degree sets you up for almost any uh, career path, especially in the service sector um, uh, around. Um, it really sets students up to be good communicators, good writers, good speakers, and, and at least uh, definitely on the Bachelor of Science side, but I think even on the Bachelor of Arts side, sets students up to be um, good consumers of science, to understand statistics when somebody is uh, speaking to you or where you're watching a commercial or reading about something um, in a newspaper or magazine. In the U.S., we're expecting job growth um, at about 3 to 8 percent through 2031. Um, this is, again, from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics in disciplines um, that feed from or grow from uh, a psychology degree, an undergraduate degree in psychology. Here's just a little bit more. Um, and I probably won't spend much time here, but it kind of just, again, just in, in kind of a hierarchical way kind of demonstrates or shows um, the different degrees uh, and that you might get in psychology. And it starts at the bottom with a Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees. It's kind of be your, your entry level degrees. And if you want to get more specialized, perhaps make more money in psychology, you might go for a Master of Science degree or a Master of Arts degree in psychology. 
And then um, if you want to extend that education further and probably the highest pay paying jobs are available to individuals with a PsyD degree, again, that's the professional version uh, of, of the most advanced degree or, or a PhD, which really sets you up uh, for a career in research in the area of psychology. Um, professors, college professors, many of them have um, PhDs uh, that you might have, you might run into in a psychology department. Um, that is my uh, degree. So I, I, I came through this with a, um, through this process with a Bachelor of Science degree in psychology, or rather a Bachelor of Arts, excuse me. I went on to graduate school in behavioral neuroscience. Um, and, and after, um, after six, uh, five and a half years of graduate school, I ended up with a PhD and that launched me into my career um, as a professor and scientist um, in academia. All right, so why come and study psychology at IU Indianapolis? And um, I think maybe the major three things that I'll list here, and I'm gonna be kind of be focusing on this um, for the next series of slides, but um, IU Indianapolis will, uh, will offer an affordable, affordable education for you. Um, it offers uh, kind of a unique urban campus setting. And there's some photos here that kind of show Indianapolis, um, at least on, on, the, on the lower left, it's taken from IU Indianapolis. You can see IU Indianapolis kind of in closer uh, toward the bottom of the photo. And then back beyond that, you see the Indianapolis skyline. So it's uh, an urban campus feel, um, but still maintains this kind of um, collegiate feel that you would expect it on any college campus that you might uh, study on. And it is a major research university. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, federally uh, funded grant research that's occurring um, on the IU Indianapolis campus. What sorts of um, degrees, you know, and I think I got some slides out of line here. So I, I realized now that I forgot to talk about the advanced degrees a little bit and some of the jobs. So it looks like we're circling back. I don't know how these slides got out of out of order, but hey, this is this is the real deal right now, right? This is how it goes. So, so circling back to to um, job opportunities, and, and so we talked about Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. Here are some opportunities that you might get with more advanced degrees. The, the the master's degree might allow you to get jobs as an industrial and organizational psychologist, a marriage or family therapist, mental health counselor, school career counselor, or rehabilitation counselor. If you go on to the PhD or the PsyD degree. In psychology, then you you uh, you have opportunities as a clinical psychologist, counseling psychologist, developmental psychologist, school psychologist, and it goes on. And at the bottom there, scientist and professor, which is the route that I took. We're expecting job growth here to be uh, between two and twelve percent through twenty thirty one. Again, this is from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. All right. So, and again, you know, the advanced degrees are going to allow one to. Um, to do more specialized jobs and, and to enter into some of the more high, higher paying jobs in psychology. All right, now we're back to what I uh, started to get into a moment ago. So like, why would you wanna come to IU uh, Indianapolis to study? So uh, just a little bit about where the campus is and about Indianapolis in, in this slide. So you can see a map of the United States, the star uh, there over that, that essentially takes up the whole state of Indiana there is uh, approximately where Indianapolis is in the state of Indiana. Um, the campus itself, IU Indianapolis, is located right downtown, as the picture uh, a couple slides ago suggested, um, right downtown in Indianapolis. Um, Indianapolis itself um, is considered uh, the heart of the U.S. You can see there's an awful lot of the U.S. Um, off to the west of Indianapolis. But uh, there's also there's lots uh, large swaths of, of of open land, so it's kind of uh, kind of the gateway to the West in a lot of ways. It's known as the crossroads of America, and I didn't know this. I'm not from Indiana. I actually, grew up in Colorado, um, interestingly enough. But uh, there are more interstate highways that intersect at Indianapolis than any other city in America. I'm actually, you know, I I'm I'm still questioning. I mean, I've been told and I've read that that's true, but uh, that's impressive, I guess. <laughs> but yes, it's the crossroads of America. Um, living in Indianapolis is fun. Um, there's lots of to, lots to do here, and it affords lots of opportunities uh, to students that are here. It's the 15th largest city in the U.S. Um, we consider ourselves to be uh, high on the Midwestern U.S. hospitality sort of thing. And and I realize, you know, if you are uh, an international student, you have no idea what that means. You'll have to come to Indiana to find out exactly what that means. It's Midwestern hospitality. 
uh, we we uh, are known as Hoosiers, which I also don't understand uh, where that came that name came from. But there's also another term, Hoosier hospitality, which gets more specific, like Indiana. So folks folks in Indiana, and uh, and it's it's a great place to live, a really supportive and um, and and great place to to be. Great people here. There's cultural diversity in Indianapolis, as you might expect with any major city anywhere um, in the U.S. And, and probably around the world. Um, and so you would have that here. And there's a there's a decent population of of international folks from from India, Africa, and other places. So um, so there's there's good cultural diversity, and guarantee that if you came to study here, you would um, you would find. Um, you know, a group of individuals, a large group of individuals that that make their home here, and students as well, um, that are, uh, you know, from your home country. Approximately ten percent lower cost of living here in Indianapolis compared to the national average, and so that's that's really great. What that means is, uh, you know, it's a more affordable place for a student to be. Um, we are. Perhaps you know the racing capital of the world, maybe not, um, but uh, the Indianapolis 500 um, IndyCar race is uh, here. The um, Speedway, where this race takes place, is huge. Um, it's probably one of the biggest sporting arenas I've ever seen anywhere. Uh, but beyond just the racing, uh, race cars in Indianapolis, we're also home to 11 professional sports teams, including a National Football League team, the Indianapolis Colts, and a National Basketball association team, um, uh, the Indiana Pacers, all right here. And um, especially uh, the Indianapolis Colts um, walking distance uh, from the university. I should say lots of things are walking distance right from campus, including the zoo and um, all the museums um, around town and lots of really great food. Um, in, the, in, in the next point here, uh, I mentioned art museums, symphony, ballet, all present here in Indianapolis. Um, and here's something I think that um, is kind of important. Um, at least, at least for me, uh, I don't, you know, I'm, I, I'm not from Indiana. My family doesn't I mean, my immediate family obviously is here, but my extended family, my parents and, and why do not live here. So, um, it's great to have a really fantastic airport. I would argue probably the best airport in the entire United States right here in Indianapolis. It's really easy to get to cities all over the U S you can fly nonstop from Indianapolis to almost anywhere in the U S uh, a little harder to fly internationally from Indianapolis, but we're just a short drive from Chicago. It's only three hours up the road to Chicago from Indianapolis. Uh, and certainly you can get on a plane and, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes later, you're in Chicago or, you know, an hour later, you're in New York City and you can catch an international flight uh, from those locations as well. So, yeah, so it's really got a great location for getting a lot of places pretty easily and quickly. I mentioned that IU Indianapolis is a major public research university. Um, it um, these statistics might be just a little bit outdated, but um, I, I can't imagine they've changed too much. It receives more than four hundred million in external research grants um, annually. Um, the student population is uh, thirty thousand plus in terms of students. Um, we have uh, nineteen hundred um, upwards of nineteen hundred international students from over 140 countries on the IU Indianapolis campus. And um, we have 225, um, upwards of 225 degree programs across 17 academic schools on the campus. So there's a lot of opportunities. The, the, the psychology degrees that you could uh, pursue in Indianapolis are in the IU Indianapolis School of Science. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that specifically are coming up. So here's just some other things that uh, just notable things about the IU Indianapolis campus. It's among the top uh, 10 business schools or has one uh, top 10 business school here on campus. And the largest medical school in the United States is right here on campus. The IU School of Medicine uh, has the first school of informatics in the U.S. Um, it is number two nationally in um, issues related to sustainability. Um, this is according to uh, the Times Higher Education. It uh, offers the first school of philanthropy in the entire world, um, the only school of dentistry in Indiana. Um, it's a 10-time winner of the Ed Higher Education Excellence and Diversity Award from Insight into Diversity. So we have a heavy focus on diversity on the campus um, and, and building an inclusive learning environment um, for, for all the students that study here. 
Um, and ranked number 46 in terms of uh, most innovative schools, um, uh, largely on issues of diversity and sustainability, um, I, I would say. Um, and so, so that's just a little bit about just the campus. How about the Department of Psychology? And so that's what I'm going to transition here to a bit. So we have these degrees here um, in the Department of Psychology at, at IU Indianapolis. And again, we are a department that's seated in the Indiana University School of Science at Indianapolis. Um, we have bachelor degrees, uh, a bachelor of arts degree in psychology, a bachelor of science degree in psychology. And we also have a bachelor of science degree in neuroscience. And I, I realize I'm here talking about psychology primarily, but behavioral neuroscience is a branch of psychology. And we have uh, behavioral neuroscientists in the department. I am one of those. Um, and we offer a bachelor of science degree um, that, that focuses broadly in neuroscience. Uh, we have a master's degree in industrial and organiza organizational psychology. This master's degree is a is a thesis based degree, which basically means that you have to do some research and write a thesis um, as part of the coursework to graduate. But we are exploring um, changing that uh, and and eliminating the thesis part, or at least having an option that does not require a thesis. And then it would really be a master's program that focuses uh, on, you know, just uh, some coursework that takes you one and a half to two years to complete that would set you up really well to get a job in industry um, consulting or, or in HR or something like that. Um, and of course, we have our two PhD degrees uh, in addiction neuroscience. That is uh, the PhD program that I am a training faculty member uh, in. And I'll talk about what that means here in a minute. And then clinical psychology, which is probably an area that that more folks are familiar with. And I'll, I'll talk about that as well. Here's another picture of, of campus um, at daybreak. Um, it might look like that um, about right now as the sun is coming up. Um, but you can see uh, the School of Science in the foreground. And behind that, you can see um, Indianapolis. It's a very beautiful setting. So in, in the psychology department, we have 25 full-time faculty members. Uh, faculty research programs are nationally and internationally recognized. Many faculty members are supported by external research grants. Uh, most of these grants are for the, from the National Institutes of Health. And so um, this would be the, the major granting institution, federal or U.S. Uh, granting institution for um, research programs in the health sciences. And so that should tell you something about what our faculty are involved in. So many of our faculty are doing work that that is in the area of the health sciences and therefore gets uh, is able to get National Institutes of Health grants to support that work. A number of our faculty uh, have also received the, the most prestigious of the National Institutes of Health uh, grants, this coveted R01 grant. Um, these are big uh, upwards of $1 million grants uh, to fund your research over five years. Um, and so we've had much success in the department uh, across the faculty of, of obtaining R01 level funding, which is um, really a benchmark of, of strong research success. So in the next series of slides, I'm just gonna kind of show you some pictures of faculty, kind of just review um, the kind of the areas of research focus in the department. Um, and, I, and I kind of also work into that, the, the uh, advanced degree options in, in psychology. I realize that, that uh, most of you if, you, if any of you were to come to Indianapolis to study, you would probably be working on an undergraduate degree first, but this gives you a sense of what the faculty research looks like and the kind of research that you might do as an undergraduate on campus. Um, and, and I think that's important. And I'll, I'll circle back to that idea too. So uh, we have uh, two different faculty members that specialize in industrial and organizational psychology. And they are the two faculty members supported by some other faculty. And I'll point them out when we get there um, that, would, that would support that master's program in IO psychology if you were to go on for that sort of master's degree. Um, Dr. Jane Williams and Dr. Peggy Stockdale both do work in diversity science. So their, their, their spin on IO psychology is one of, you know, how um, do d issues in diversity among the workforce influence productivity and, and this sort of thing in, in the workspace. And so that's the kind of work that they do. And, and you can see in the, in the red boxes, you can, you can see, uh, try to be a little bit more specific about just the, the specific area of research that, that they are involved in. We have um, the biggest area of the department is, is the clinical psychology area of the department. And so this is broken out into several slides. Um, 
the, the, the clinical uh, psychology faculty support a PhD in clinical psychology. And um, the, the emphasis across all of these faculty, not just the four here, but the, the rest that I'm going to show you here in the subsequent slides, um, focus on severe mental illness and rehabilitation in, in folks with severe mental illness, clinical health psychology, health disparities, um, and substance use. And so in this slide, I'm showing you faculty that specialize in severe mental illness and substance use. The um, substance use researchers are shown on the top, Dr. Melissa Siders and Dr. Tamika Sapolsky. And, and the two investigators that, that, that focus on um, severe mental illness are shown below, uh, Dr. Kyle Miner and Dr. Michelle Salyers. And again, these are four of the, and I should have counted up, I don't even know how many there are, four of the faculty, <clears throat> faculty in clinical psychology. Here are some more faculty in clinical psychology, again, supporting that clinical psychology PhD and importantly, um, training undergraduates in their lab, giving undergraduates students an opportunity to get some cutting edge research experience. Um, these faculty here in this slide focus on clinical health psychology um, and include doctors Adam Hirsch, Catherine Moser, Kevin Rand, Jesse Stewart, and Wei Wu. All right, and I guess I should have said that um, that our clinical psychology program is APA accredited. This is APA stands for the American Psychological Association. This accreditation is important. It means that our clinical psychology degree and really our entire department um, follows the latest recommendations of the American Psychological, psychological Association with respect to a solid education in psychology. It, at the level of the, the PhD though, in clinical psychology, it's, a, it's basically putting the stamp of approval um, of the APA on the training program in, in uh, PhD program in clinical psychology. So this is important for, um, for any reputable psychology program to have. Also in um, the clinical psychology area, but focusing in the area of social psychology and specifically health disparities are these two investigators here, Drs. Veronica Derricks and India Johnson. Um, and I mentioned a few minutes ago that um, there were um, a couple of supporting faculty for the IO um, master's degree, and Drs. Derricks and Johnson are, are those two faculty. So they assist Drs. Um, Jane Williams and uh, Peggy Stockdale in administering that master's program as well, um, in as much as social psychology kind of bridges um, both IO psychology and clinical psychology, especially given their area of expertise. Here are the faculty that are uh, the behavioral neuroscientists in the department. Um, and you can see uh, an older picture of myself there as well. Um, this is, uh, these are faculty that support the PhD in addiction neuroscience. Um, you might be wondering what addiction neuroscience is. It kind of defined behavioral neuroscience as like physiological psychology or biological psychology. Um, but addiction neuroscience kind of focuses that more on just um, substance use and problems stemming from um, substance use. And so we have a whole PhD program that, that trains graduate students and undergraduates um, in areas of research that um, add to our knowledge about um, how um, brain function and behavior are affected primarily by um, recreational drug use, um, alcohol marijuana, cocaine, um, you could go on and on with the, with the various drugs. And you can see the faculty here that are associated with the program. Uh, you see myself, but you also see doctors Logrip, Tchaikovsky, Neil Beliveau, Oberlin, and Graham. All of us are doing area uh, research in the area of addiction neuroscience. Um, one thing uh, of, of note across all the faculty that I showed you here was it, is that we're all kind of uh, alcohol addiction researchers before anything else. And um, in my lab, and it's just a little bit about me, has focused now for um, upwards of 20 years on binge drinking and brain circuits that govern binge drinking. Another interesting aspect of this is that, you know, I've talked to you about um, industrial and organizational psychology faculty, social psychology faculty, and clinical psychology faculty, and these folks um, all do their research uh, in human subjects. And all of the faculty though, associated with addiction neuroscience, do their work um, with rodents and model aspects of addiction in rodents so that they can ask very pointed questions about brain function, the impact of these drugs on brain function. 
I mentioned that we're all kind of focused in alcohol and I focus in binge alcohol. So I, I give um, alcohol solution, 20% solution to mice for two hours, three hours into the dark cycle. The mice are nocturnal animals, so they do all their drinking during the dark cycle. And so I give this uh, to them for two hours and, I, and, I, and I've restricted it to two hours because this is part of the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism's definition of binge drinking. And the, the NIAAA is one of the NIH institutes, a sub-institute, and where I get my funding from with respect to the federal government. Um, when we do this in the mice, uh, when people drink heavily in just two hours, um, they will reach blood alcohol levels exceeding 0.08 milligrams per deciliter. And the mice do that as well, which is fantastic. They, um, they, do, they, they show all the signs of behavioral intoxication that you might imagine uh, for anybody who has seen somebody um, drinking alcohol. Uh, importantly though, if they, they'll drink alcohol every day and in, in this binge model, and the develop tolerance, they'll start front loading their alcohol. So over days, they'll start really drinking to intoxication within like five, 10 minutes of the, of the bottle presentation. And they develop this compulsive drinking after about a week of binge drinking where we can add a really terrible tasting substance to the alcohol and the, the animals, you know, nasty animals, will you still drink the alcohol? And if the animals have become compulsive in their drinking, they will sample that solution. They will demonstrate to you behaviorally that they can't stand it, but then they will binge drink it anyway, despite how bad it now tastes. And so uh, current studies in my lab are focusing on uh, understanding um, a circuit between the basal lateral amygdala and the dorsal medial striatum in the, in, in the control of binge drinking behavior. And again, my work is supported by the NIAAA and, and more specifically an alcohol research center grant from the NIAAA. So that's just a little bit about me. This is the last faculty slide. We just have some other faculty too that are focused more in the area of teaching. They do research in the area of teaching psychology or neuroscience. And, um, and then we have a few other faculty too that, that are involved in clinical training, more plugged into the, the clinical psychology PhD program. And those faculty are listed here, Dr. Shannon Krupa, Milana Petrovic, Tina Chen, Debbie Harold, Deanna Barthlow, and Kendra Stewart. All right, so what about the degrees? And I'm, I'm looking at Leslie here and I'm looking at the time of 37 minutes and we have an hour. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to talk about the degrees and I'm gonna get us to a point where you can have a few minutes. Does that sound good? All right, perfect. That all sounds right, so, great. All right, great. And so our bachelor's programs, um, I, I mentioned, uh, what do they look like? So basically a total of 120 credit hours of coursework is required. Four years, you can do this in four years. Um, some students take a little bit longer. They, they might choose to take a little bit longer, but the, the, the degrees are designed to be completed in four years. And interestingly, um, I am currently working on a number of two plus two agreements with various institutions in India. Um, and I don't know if we have anybody on um, the webinar from Jindal Global University today, today but um, we are um, close to having uh, a two plus two agreement with uh, General Global University coming up. So this, so in this kind of an agreement, you would do two years of, of psychology study at Jindal or at another institution that we might try to, 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 to work this out with next. And then you'd come to the US to, to IU Indianapolis and complete your uh, two more years of, of study and get a four year degree in psychology here in the US. Courses you might take are listed here for both the BA and the BS degrees in psychology. And, and you can kind of read them down. Um, I list on the right here uh, courses, core courses that would be associated with the Bachelor of Science in Neuroscience. You'll notice on both of these at the end of the list, I have uh, a capstone there. Um, these are opportunities. Um, they kind of, they're, they're, they're diverse opportunities, but one of the key things that, that capstones provide is an opportunity for students to get cutting edge research experience with faculty in psychology. Um, and so, um, yeah, so, it's a, so research is a big focus of, of what we do in, in training undergraduates in, in, in research. And research is, is going to be essential if you're going to go on um, to an advanced degree. Um, but research also just teaches some really great um, working skills, group working skills, and, and thing. it looks really great on a, on a resume. Let's just leave it there. The master's degree is composed, uh, and this is a master's a master of science in industrial and organizational psychology, to be specific. 30 credit hours of coursework. There is research required because the thesis is required. And that's, I mentioned a bit ago that we, we, we might try to, to, to develop a version of this that doesn't require the research uh, necessarily or the thesis for folks that really wanna just get the master's degree and, and better their opportunities in business and, and, and whatnot. But it's a three or four year, um, it requires a three or four year bachelor of degree with a minimum GPA of 3.2 
three and three letters of recommendation. Um, it prepares students for work in consulting, human resources training and development and data analytics. So it's so really can set you up to, for, for really great things in business. Uh, the program was recognized in 2018 as a top choice for students seeking training in IO psychology. So that's that's kind of a claim to fame, fame of that program there. Our doctoral programs, again, are in addiction neuroscience and clinical psychology. Both of these programs require credit, 90 credit hours. They also require that you come in with a, a Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree, a, th a three or four year degree uh, with a minimum GPA of 3.2 and the three letters of recommendation. Um, and students trained in these programs um, are trained as clinicians or scientists, research scientists in the areas of clinical psychology or addiction neuroscience. And here's just some coursework associated with each one of these. Uh, you can see key courses in addiction neuroscience, clinical psychology, industrial and organizational psychology. And uh, I put here statistics. We have faculty with statistical um, expertise in the department too. And we teach some pretty great classes in, in statistical analysis and design as well. All right, so I think I am going to, we might be able to come back to these slides. I got some pictures here. Um, that might be fun, but let me just end here on a couple of quick slides. Uh, tuition expenses, folks might be interested in that. So tuition for an international student, last time I checked, was $960 per credit hour, and Leslie might have some more information about that, perhaps. Um, Part-time work is available on campus, so you can help um, supplement um, or get paid for um, during your time here while you're taking classes. Research or teaching assistant opportunities are available in the PhD level, so we take care of students in psychology and that, that research and teaching opportunities, uh, those are paid positions. So it, it uh, pays for your graduate study or at least helps to pay for it. Um, the undergraduate application deadlines are May 1st and December 1st every year. The graduate application deadline is December 1st. Um, that's for, for a start in the next year's fall semester. And then here's just a link for applying. And so I'm going to I'm going to stop here. If you have uh, if you want to know more information about psychology or, or any of the programs in the School of Science specifically at IU Indianapolis, you might um, contact Priya Curley and her uh, contact information is here. And I, I are, will these slides. These slides will be available to everybody later. Right. At least I know this is recorded, so at least I can watch the recording and see the slides that way. Correct, Dr. Bohm. We hope that um, for folks who are joining halfway through the call today, um, we welcome everyone to rewatch or, um, you know, seek out any information um, on the recordings uh, on our social media pages, but also reach out to us um, and connect with us directly so we can uh, answer any questions that come up after the call today. You have the floor. Thank you so much. So uh, let me pull up some slides here about IU Indianapolis. And um, again, thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time to join us. Um, I've been noticing some great questions coming through, and um, I'll share those with Dr. Bowman in just a moment uh, during our Q&A session. Um, so I want to spend just a few moments uh, sharing a little bit more about all things Indiana University Indianapolis. We are transitioning from IUPUI to IU Indianapolis in the fall of 2024, and we're really excited about this uh, upcoming uh, change and all things ahead. Um, uh, IU has had a really rich presence on uh, campus and in the heart of downtown Indianapolis uh, for many years. And we are very proud to be the premier urban research university in the state of Indiana. So we've been, uh, we've had a presence in Indianapolis since 1895. We've been IUPUI since 1969. And from 2024, we are moving ahead to all things IU Indianapolis, where students will have over 300 majors to choose from. Uh, we will have many benefits, as Dr. Bohm had mentioned, for our variety of esteemed programs on campus for undergrad, uh, graduate level, and beyond. So just a little bit more about our campus in general. Um, Right now we have about 30,000 students as uh, in total on campus. So there are going to be many um, people on and around campus to connect with, um, but we still maintain a smaller class size for the majority of your courses. Um, with over 75% uh, of the classes, you'll have less than 30 students in class with you. So you'll have a great chance to connect with professors, uh, engage with your classmates, 
and dive into research opportunities uh, from year one as an undergraduate student. Diversity around campus is really important to us. So among our 1800 plus international students right now, we have more than 100 com uh, countries represented and that's something we're really proud uh, and uh, excited to continue. Um, I am part of the international office on campus and so our our goal is to make sure that we can be a home away from home for our students. We want to provide support from the time you've arrived in Indianapolis through graduation and beyond. Um, so that will include a comprehensive orientation and welcome sessions. Um, you'll be able to meet and uh, discuss questions with our international student advising team. We provide cultural and educational adjustment help. And we have a fantastic peer mentoring program where you can connect uh, from your first year with students who have gone through a similar situation and can provide guidance, advice, and help you get connected to our campus network. Uh, we do have um, multiple programs to choose from. So our focus today really has been psychology. Um, and, uh, you know, we also have the ability from our more than 15 degrees uh, granting schools for students to double major, pick up a major and a minor, or uh, create a unique program that would best suit your educational path moving forward. Um, I'll have information later on about some ways to connect to get more information about uh, the department specifically, um, but just a overview, a broad overview of campus. We do have top programs, um, STEM programs, health sciences, the Kelly School of Business, uh, the Luddy School of Informatics, Computing and Engineering, and more. Um, we are home to the only dental school in the state of Indiana, and we have the nation's largest nursing and uh, medical school right uh, directly next to campus. So it makes uh, research opportunities potential internships, uh, et cetera, very convenient for our students. As Dr. Bowman mentioned, our location is something we're really uh, proud of and want to share. Uh, we're known as Indy. Indianapolis known, is known as Indy to locals. And uh, being the capital city of our state and the hub for uh, the economic center, uh, cultural pieces of the state of Indiana, uh, it provides a really great location for students to study. Um, within a 15 minute walk, you can go directly from campus to the heart of downtown Indianapolis, where we have um, uh, many opportunities uh, such as NBA, NFL, um, soccer teams as well. We have cultural activities such as um, the symphony, museums, our Indianapolis Zoo, many concerts, uh, and more. Um, another big perk to our location is the access to internships. Uh, so many of our students will study and uh, look for a part-time job or internship opportunity at the same time. Um, we have many uh, Fortune 500 companies, small businesses, research opportunities, uh, all within a 15 minute walk from campus. So students can maximize their time in Indianapolis. Uh, here are a few stats about some of our internship opportunities. Uh, we, for the Kelly School of Business, for example, more than 450 students have had internships since uh, 2020. Um, the Luddy School of Informatics uh, is very well known for um, having stackable certificates as well. So uh, not only in the Department of Psychology, but around campus, our professors care about students very much and they're trying to help guide you through your program, support you academically, and help prepare you for your future career opportunities or graduate studies as well. Um, so here's a beautiful view of our downtown skyline taken from campus as well. So you can really get a sense of how close we are to uh, downtown Indianapolis. Um, the information here covers a little bit more about the cost to study at IU Indianapolis. Um, and then all of the QR links um, will be available on the last slide as well. Um, but we do have um, uh, merit scholarships 
available starting at 5,000 uh, for all four years, uh, all the way up to full tuition through the Honors College, uh, which is uh, more competitive scholarships. Um, so please do reach out to the international office uh, to get more information and we can help answer specific questions you may have about how to apply and study at IU Indianapolis. A little bit about the checklist to prepare um, if you're interested in uh, submitting an application. Uh, we are able to uh, accept both the Common app or you can di apply directly through our website at apply.iu. Uh, we are a test optional school, meaning we do not need SAT or ACT scores to apply, um, but you're welcome to submit those to help uh, show proof of English. Uh, we would need your academic records, um, official academic records, um, TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, or other proof of English, uh, financial documents and bank statements, etc. Uh, so we would, in the international admissions team, help walk you through the entire application process. We'd be there to support and answer questions along the way. Um, and uh, definitely reach out to connect with our department for more information. Um, I'll have the QR link here if you'd like to connect with us. This will um, share a little bit more from our link tree and then let me drop our email in the chat right now. Um, I apologize I went through that information a little quickly because I want to make sure we have time for the great questions coming through. Uh, so with that let me um, remove and Dr. Bohm I'll uh, jump back over to the questions we have uh, starting with um, we, you know, we had a lot of questions coming through about uh, how to best prepare um, for a career in psychology. Do you have any recommendations on uh, different AP classes to take in high school, any coursework to take to stand out as an applicant, um, and how to best prepare uh, for a high school student? If, if, you, um, if you have the opportunity to take an AP course in psychology, that's always good preparation. But, you know, just like... Um, I mentioned that psychology as a, as a career path, or, or I guess as a destination for a, a, a college degree, uh, really sets you up for lots of different career paths. Um, I would, I would uh, say and answer that question by saying that, that there are a number of different paths you can get to, to get into college and study psychology. We're, we're basically just looking for students that are, are, are good thinkers that uh, can write something coherently um, uh, in, in, a, in a short essay um, and students who are motivated and interested in, interested in learning about psychology. Um, certainly, if you come into it with, uh, with AP psychology credit or other AP credit, uh, we love to see that. But um, we admit many students that don't come in with you know, AP credits. So I, I don't know if I answered the question very well, but certainly invite um, students that had those sorts of questions to follow up with additional questions in the chat. Absolutely. Keep the questions coming. Um, so I also see several um, students inquiring about math and science courses in high school, um, leading maybe into research and uh, some certain majors um, within your, your department. Could you share a little bit more perspective on um, maybe math or science courses and how, how many of those to take in high school before applying? Yeah. There, so uh, I mentioned three different bachelor of science degrees that that you could come in and study so we get the bachelor of arts in psychology bachelor of science in psychology and the bachelor of science in neuroscience and probably the 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 most stringent of those um in terms of you know what sorts of chemistry math physics and whatnot biology that you'd come in with um from high school would probably be in neuroscience but but honestly we're going to give you um at iu indianapolis the the you know, the, the training you need, the, the courses that you need to graduate with the degree. Uh, the Bachelor of Science degrees, especially in neuroscience, might re, you know, I think the best prepared student might have had some uh, at least pre-calculus, if not some calculus in high school, but, um, but not every major comes in with that. Um, there will be a requirement that you take calculus um, to graduate with a, with a Bachelor of Science degree in neuroscience. 
There is much less of a math requirement for the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees in, in psychology. And, um, and as you might predict, the Bachelor of Science degree has a higher level math requirement. And what I mean by that is what do you have to, what math do you have to pass in your college studies at IU Indianapolis in order to get the degree? Um, the, the, uh, the level of math that you have to pass is much lower for the Bachelor of Arts degree. Fantastic. Um, I see a question from Shreya um, who asks, are there research and publication opportunities for undergrad students at IU Indianapolis? Yes, there are, um, especially the research opportunities. Um, we really pride ourselves, I, I would say not just psychology, but the entire school of science, and I would argue the campus as a whole, in providing um, research, really great research opportunities for, for undergraduates. Um, and these research opportunities, at least, you know, you're coming to study psychology or neuroscience, and they're not just in psychology or in the school of science, you can major in neuroscience or psychology, and you can get research experience in the school of medicine, or the school of nursing or the school of dentistry. Um, the possibilities are, are, are really endless. There are faculty across the campus not necessarily affiliated with the undergraduate degree granting programs in the School of Science that are happy to take our students from those programs and into their research labs and give them that opportunity. Uh, publication is a little bit harder and it's just because an undergraduate student would have to come in and work in a lab, work there long enough to um, contribute enough to get, you know, to become an author on a publication. That has happened quite a bit in my lab. So it is, it is absolutely doable. I've actually had two students in my lab that uh, were so, so, uh, undergraduate students that were so outstanding that they ended up um, authoring a first author publication. So it's where their name appears first on the publication. And that's truly impressive. It's a, it's a big feat, but it is possible um, in my lab and in other labs here at IU Indianapolis. Excellent. Um, I see a question here from Ismail from Nigeria. Um, it sounds like uh, they have a first degree in business administration from a university there. Um, would they be qualified for a master's degree in psychology? Um, so maybe for, share a little bit more about uh, moving from undergrad to grad with a different background. Yeah. So, so perhaps, yes. Um, the best, you know, so unfortunately, it's just me sitting here talking to you all uh, this afternoon. This evening, but uh, you know, if I had some of my colleagues sitting here with me that that uh, look at applications for the industrial and organizational masters program, um, they could probably answer the question better. But uh, a business degree is exactly the kind of student that would be interested in an I/O uh, masters degree um, at at IU Indianapolis, and so um, I would. Without seeing anything, you know, any of your application materials, I would I would suspect that you would be very competitive for a spot in, in the master's program. And especially um, if we, you know, we, we create the version of the program um, that does not require the, the thesis part, which actually might be more, I don't know, hard to say, right, but might be of more interest to more students who are really interesting, in, more interested in increasing the chances of getting a really good paying job in business or industry. Excellent. So. Um, let's see, so uh, we are uh, almost out of time today. So I just wanna take a moment and Dr. Bohm, thank you so very much for your time and uh, all of the information you've shared on the call. Uh, reminder to everyone joining us, uh, we'll be sending their certificates out uh, after the call. So please keep an eye on your email inbox for those and definitely share those out on LinkedIn. Um, we hope and encourage you to connect with us, um, either uh, reach out to iapply at iu.edu um, and also I'll uh, go back to the contact information for Dr. Bohm as well. Um, so we'd love to hear from you after the call today. Um, we do have uh, some additional specific questions about high school coursework and scholarships. Please reach out to the international admissions team at IU Indianapolis. Um, I'm seeing so many messages, Dr. Bohm, thanking you as well. Um, I so, appreciate it. Um, maybe uh, time for one more um, uh, question and I'll kind of combine a few together. Dr. Bohm, could you give any um, 
last minute guidance or suggestions to our high school students on the call today, um, thinking about studying psychology and any, uh, any advice as they would prepare for applications. Don't be afraid to re reach out to the professors in the programs that you're interested in, in pursuing in college. Um, hopefully most of you who are on this call have, uh, have spent time getting to know your high school teachers. Um, and, and that's fantastic. You want to do that in college and there's no time like the present. So um, if you have questions, uh, additional questions after this call, don't hesitate to reach out to Priya. She can put you in, com uh, in contact with me. You can find me on the psychology website at IU Indianapolis, or I guess it would still be listed as IUPUI, our current name. Uh, you can find me there. I am happy to answer questions that way, but, but talk to and get to know them. Uh, they not only will uh, provide guidance uh, to you on how best to prepare before you come to college, but they're going to be the individuals that help you survive college and help you come out the backside with the degree you want, with the, the, the training in college and the experiences in college that you uh, are hoping to get, and probably some you're not expecting that are so great. So, uh, so yeah, so, so get to know your professors. Don't be afraid to reach out to, to uh, them and ask questions and talk with them. And um, that's my best advice. Wonderful. Dr. Bohm, thank you again. Thanks to everyone joining us on the call today. Stay connected and keep an eye out for future webinar series um, topics coming through. Uh, we look forward to hosting more of these throughout the rest of the semester. And I look forward to hearing from you at IU Indianapolis. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Goodbye, Bye. everybody.